How's it going everyone? Evan here, back with another video about the making of Retro MMO, where we'll be taking a more in-depth look at how the game's engine works. If you've not already seen the Game Engine Overview video in this series, I'd highly recommend giving that one a watch first. Link is in the description. In today's episode, I'll be giving some insight into how graphics are rendered in Retro MMO. Let's get started. I think that the best place to look first is probably in our index.html that I have open here. This file is what is served to the player when they first load up the website, or in my case, localhost 3000. This file is what contains all of our markup for the login and all of our markup for the chat and settings on the side. Pretty much everything except for this main game screen here is controlled by plain old HTML and CSS. Or in my case, I use SCSS, which is a superset that adds some nice features to CSS, like variables and nesting of selectors and things. But I am using no frameworks here, uh, just very basic JavaScript. Like for example, when I'm clicking on these menus like settings and chat and toggling values and stuff. It's just, it's all just plain JavaScript toggling CSS classes that conditionally show or don't show based off of the state of the menus. Um, oh, this loading screen too, I should mention. But for our title screen, uh, same thing. Like these are all just plain old CSS background images. You can see if I do inspect element on these, just a regular old div with grass.png and a bunch of properties to scale it proportionally based on the screen size. Uh, so now that we have covered that though, I'll get into the rendering of graphics in the actual game window, which I guess is really the more interesting part. And I think that the place that we would start with this is, well, for, I guess first I can at least go ahead and show you me uh, instantiating these canvases. I am just using canvas rendering context 2D for this game, no graphics libraries or frameworks or anything. Um, but I, I have three canvas elements, actually. I have the main canvas, which is where almost everything is rendered, uh, excluding text is one of those. Text gets its own canvas that is layered on top, and I'll explain why that is later. And then we have the overlay canvas, which I believe the only thing that is uh, used on the overlay canvas is our scan lines effect. Um, I had to create a third canvas on top because I wanted the scan lines to also appear on top of text. I think that's all we use it for at the moment. But uh, yeah, one of the very first things that happens once I log in is the game initializes. And one of the things that happens in this initialize is size canvas. Um, this is all of my code for scaling the canvas to fit the screen. As you can see, uh, no matter what size I make my screen, the game will maintain aspect ratio, but it will scale to the closest version which fits while still maintaining that aspect ratio. And this is what we're using to achieve that. It's a combination of conditionally changing some CSS values, changing height and width properties, as well as using the uh, canvas context.scale method and toggling uh, image smoothing enabled. Uh, the image smoothing enabled is uh, just for our graphics to be rendered, not smoothed over and like properly looking pixelated, as this is a very low resolution game meant to uh, mimic the graphics of an old console. Uh, I've, I forgot to mention that another another big part of that is that in the CSS we're using these image rendering properties that are also instructing the browser to you know treat this, render this pixelated essentially. These uh, were these are two pieces of the same problem, the CSS and this image smoothing. So I, I should also mention though that this size canvas is called every time you resize. So it's called on a knit, but then also every single time I change it, every time the window changes size, so we can uh, accurately shift it because people will change their windows. People will definitely change their window size mid play. 
and want it to still be scaled properly. So actually drawing things on the canvas. What I'm using is a request animation frame loop. Uh, I'm probably calling it, yeah, window.requestAnimationFrame. And I call my draw function inside of that loop. And you can see in the draw function, we, before anything, just wipe all the canvases by doing clear rect with the entire size of each canvas. Then is all of our rendering code, which uh, if you really break these down and like trace these all the way down to what they're doing at the end, they're calling uh, like wrapper functions that I've made for the canvas con or yeah canvas context API. Like for example, draw image, it just uses the canvas context draw image and passes things in. My text rendering just uses the context of the text canvas and sets some properties and then uses fill text. And that's the same for pretty much everything. Uh, so just one more thing that I meant to mention about the text rendering. I, I did say earlier about how uh, text has its own canvas all to itself in my rendering code. The reasoning for that was because uh, in our size canvas, when we're scaling the different canvases, uh, the way that fill text works, the way that the canvas context that fill text method works, um, just different scaling methods work better for having it look crisp and pixelated rather than uh, drawing images uh, just due to the nature of how Canvas handles text rendering. That's all. All right, I think that about covers the basics of how we do our graphics rendering. I hope it was cool getting a more behind the scenes look into the game. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a like. And if you'd like to see even more from me, consider subscribing. I appreciate the support bunches. If you are interested in watching me work on Retro MMO Live, head over to my Twitch page where I stream daily. There is a decent chance that I'm even live right now. Link is in the description. Oh, and before I go, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Covalence. Covalence is a full stack web development bootcamp and is actually the school that I attended. Covalence's goal is to bring you from zero programming experience to a career ready software developer. And that is exactly what they did for me. If you are interested in learning web development, I highly recommend that you check them out. Their link is down in the description. So once again, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.